Welcome to our lecture online. Here we're going to take a closer look at the four Galilean moons and compare it to our own moon. And we're going to start with the orbital parameters and then on the next video we'll do the physical parameters. So when we take a look at the orbits, so we have Io, Europa, Ganymede and Callisto, notice that we have what we call the periapses and the apoapses. The periapses is the closest point to the planet Jupiter in its orbit. The apoapsis is the farthest point away from, the, from Jupiter in its orbit. And notice that for the four Galilean moons, the difference between the two is relatively small. Here it is only about 3,000 kilometers. Here it's about 12,000 kilometers. Here it's even less, only about 2,000 kilometers or about 2,400 kilometers. And here it's about uh, 30,000 kilometers. But Compared to the distances, that's relatively small because when you look at the moon, notice the difference here is well over 40,000 kilometers. So it looks like the eccentricity of the four moons is relatively small. And then when we check the eccentricity, indeed, compared to our own moon, where it's more than 5%, here you can see that it's less than a percent, less than a percent, less than a percent, and less than a percent for all four of the moons. There's a reason for that. And we'll take a look at it in just a moment. Notice that if you look at the average orbital radius, the, the, the difference between Io and Europa is about 350,000 kilometers. The difference between Europa and Ganymede is about 400,000 kilometers. And the difference between Callisto and Ganymede is slightly over 800,000 kilometers. There doesn't appear to be a particular pattern. Then if we take a look at the orbital period, how long does it take for these moons to go around Jupiter now since Jupiter is this enormous planet with this enormous gravitational force and since those four Galilean moons are relatively close to the planet Jupiter in the case of Io almost as close as the moon is to the earth they need to move pretty fast to prevent them from falling into Jupiter so you can see that the orbital period is only 1.769 days for Io 3.551 days for Europa, 7.155 days for Ganymede, and 16.689 days for Callisto. Compare that to our, our own moon, notice it's a little, a little over 27 days for one trip around the Earth for our own moon. Therefore, the orbital speed is quite different. Notice it's 17.3 kilometers per second, 13.7, 10.9, and 8.2. That's kind of comparable to the speed of the Earth around the Sun, which is close to 30 kilometers per second. So these moons are moving pretty fast. Compared to our own moon, it's just kind of moseying around at about one kilometer per second. That's why it takes almost a month for the moon to get around the Earth. Now, when you take a look at the inclination of the moons relative to the equator of Jupiter, notice they're very, very close, 0 0.05, 0 0.47, 0 0.20, and 0.192. Notice that relative to the ecliptic, they're relatively close to the ecliptic because Jupiter inclination is not very far away from the equator. Uh, or I should say that the equator of Jupiter is fairly close to the ecliptic. So you can see that the difference between the orbital, uh, the orbital spin around, the, um, around the Jupiter is very close to the ecliptic plane, roughly about 2 degrees off. That's about the same for the moon, but notice that the moon is very different in its orbit around the Earth relative to the Earth's equator because, of course, the Earth is tilted at 23.5 degrees. What's also very in interesting is that our moon is synchronous, the, the orbit of the moon is synchronous, or I should say the revolution, or the rotation around its axis, that's the best way to say it, the rotation around its axis is synchronous to the orbital period. In other words, it takes 27.3 days for the Moon to go around the Earth, and it takes 27.3 days for the Moon to make one rotation on its axis. So the same side of the Moon is always facing, facing the Earth. And notice we have a similar arrangement for the four moons of Jupiter because of strong gravitational interaction, the orbit around Jupiter and the rotation around the axis is synchronous to its orbit. Again, the same phase of the moon is always facing Jupiter, all four moons just like it is on the Earth for the, our moon. How bright are the moons? Well, with a relatively strong or good binocular or small telescope, you can see all four moons. But you can't see them with the naked eye. That's why it wasn't discovered until 1612 by Galileo by looking at his telescope. 
or through his telescope, I should say. Notice the moon, of course, is the second brightest object in the sky besides the sun at minus 12 magnitude, very bright. When it's a full moon, you can almost read your newspaper at night underneath the moonlight. But take a look at the magnitudes of the four moons, 5.02 for Io, 5.29 for Europa, which makes sense because Europa is slightly smaller than Io. Remember, these numbers are at opposition, so uh, when they are at closest to us relative to the sun in the orbit around, uh, well, relative to the sun, I should say, Obviously, at opposition, that's when Jupiter is closest to the Earth, and that's when the moons are closest to the Earth as well, and that's when they're the brightest. So, at opposition, uh, 5.02 for Io, 5.29 for Europa, I mean, because Europa is a slightly smaller moon. 4.61 for Ganymede, which is pretty good. Uh, you should be able to see that with the naked eye under perfect seeing conditions, but it's not easy to do, so because that's a much larger moon. But then what's interesting is Callisto, since Callisto is almost as large as Ganymede, you expect the absolute magnitude, or the apparent magnitude, this is the apparent magnitude, not absolute magnitude, um, you'd expect that to be uh, a smaller number, smaller than these two moons, but it's not. It is harder to see Callisto than it is to see Europa or Io. And the reason for that is Callisto is a very dark moon, has a very dark covering, the albedo is very low, it doesn't reflect a lot of light, so it's much more difficult to see. The angular diameter for the four moons, they vary from about 1.0 for Europa to about 1.8 arc seconds for Ganymede, and again, all those numbers are opposition, of course, because it's somewhat smaller when Jupiter is on the far side uh, and far away, much farther away from the Earth. Of course, compared to the Moon, it's 30 arc min minutes. It's not easy to spot the Moon at night, uh, but it is much more difficult to spot these four moons, obviously, because they are so small. Uh, but any good telescope uh, should be able to see it, and obviously, anything over one arc seconds, meaning that the turbulence in the atmosphere should not be a problem as far as at least seeing the moons. And they've taken advantage of the fact that they are somewhat close to us. And so with the modern telescopes, the very big telescopes, they are actually able to make observations of the four moons. Of course, the best observations we've ever made of the moons when we actually send satellites to those moons to take up close-up pictures and close-up measurements with the, with the onboard equipment. So that gives you kind of an idea of the orbital parameters relative to the moon. And now we're going to take a look at the physical parameters, again, relative to our moon. So because that gives you kind of a, a good way to uh, think about it. All right. So let's do that next. Coming up. Why did you say that the moon was hard to see? Hard to spot? No, the moon is not hard to spot. <laughs> so it's hard to spot. No. no. Uh, you said our if I said that, that's not what I meant to say. I meant to say our moon is easy to spot. Oh, it's not hard to spot. Maybe you didn't hear the word not in there. You said the word not. I see the moon on the Well, that's part of the reason why that's not one of the observations given in my assignments. When I give assignments to a student to look for, um, the, the, the moon is not part of that. It's too easy <laughs> to, to find the moon, or the sun for that matter. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.